Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. Once again, it is time for my client Mike's blog. And we started the week off with a uh, back separate bench press like we always do. And he did a bench press against uh, light bands, around 30 pounds of mini bands with 325. And uh, we're pretty happy with this. Notice he does really good through the lockout. It shows you how strong his triceps are because uh, he maintains that great bar path and as soon as he gets to that mid-range sticking point the bar just flies up even on a max against bands all right afterwards uh, again we're trying to watch his shoulder health just a little bit for this block so we're doing floor presses and he used uh, the kabuki cadillac bar the kabuki strength one uh, made by my bro duffin um, and one of the things that, that he noted here, and I've seen a lot of guys say this, this bar feels so good on a floor press. Um, it just has to do with the way the angles and stuff are set up on those bars, just that slight angle. I've had a lot of people mention that, you know, who've used it, clients of mine, because that's several who have access, and they all notice it feels really good on their shoulders. Uh, and it's just something to do with the angles there. All right, after that, we do seal rows and since he has access to that bar i have that exact same bar and it is great to change things up for seal rows uh, because we can go uh, into you know more of a neutral grip position so we get a different angle all right because his elbows have been feeling a little beat up from all the jm presses uh, we went over to jm's with chains and he pointed out he's like yep immediately felt better immediately felt better perfect situation everything feels great um, and this is usually kind of our go-to for, for people who do JM presses for long periods of time. This is a very elegant solution if your elbows start to hurt, especially if you've done the band work to build the tendons, go over to accommodating resistance. Um, I like either reverse bands or to use chains for this. Since he's doing them in a bench there, reverse bands are too hard to set up, so it's easier just to, to do it that way. And then he finishes his upper body day with lateral raises. Again, uh, fairly important for guys like Mike who are, who are very advanced drug-free guys, it's very hard to build delts. Delts are one of the hardest muscles to build when you're drug-free relative to enhanced guys. Okay, And it just has to do with the fact that um, anabolics grow delts so effectively. Uh, so again, that has your drug-free struggle to keep up. All right, we did a low block pull uh, for max effort deadlift day, he got 485. Keeping in mind, deadlift is Mike's weakest lift, and it has to do with, again, having shorter arms. That's why it tends to be a good bencher. It tends to be a good squatter also uh, due to longer torso, shorter femurs. Squats come very, very easy to him. Uh, deadlifts are a lot of work, though, proportionately. Because usually long arms, long legs equal the biggest deadlifts. Uh, so he fights with it, but we are getting there. Again, we're past 500 on some of his deadlifts now. Uh, and again, that's, that is not scaled correctly to his other lifts. Like most people who see Mike and they see what his other lifts are, like they think he should be pulling 600. Um, but again, it just has to do with uh, some structural differences and some technical stuff we've run into having to work with on the deadlift, which we've discussed in past vlogs. All right, his supplemental lifts on this day are pull-ups, accessory, we'll call it accessory work. Uh, either way, I can just call it supplemental lifts. Pull-ups, good mornings, he's using the uh, Kabuki Transformer bar for that. Again, a great bar for people on conjugate. Uh, then we do a glute ham raises, and since he's at an easier setting, and he's got that, that roller pad, he's, he's adding weight at this point, um, those pads are nice. Uh, I've, I've only had one gym ever I've trained at that had those pads. Um, and they're pretty legit, definitely legit. But, you know, most setups don't have them, unfortunately. So, uh, glute ham raises and then reverse hyper extensions, and everyone knows why I love reverse hypers. We discuss it ad nauseum. Uh, so I, I won't bore you guys with all that, but any of my lifters who have access to a, a reverse hyper, uh, we tend to do it towards the end of all of our leg days. And some of my lifters do these every day. Right. If, if they need to condition and build up their low back, right? If they need the work capacity, uh, I do have lifters who will do these every single day. In fact, I just prescribed it to a guy in a consultation who's looking to maybe come on around 
New Year, but we did a consultation, a non-client on this weekend, and same thing. Told him, yeah, he could just do them every day. All right, speed bench. We used bands this wave, uh, doing five by five on it, and we rotate grips, you know, widest down into closed grip. All right, then we do, of course, there's supposed to be floor presses. I got these two files swapped. We do floor presses, and then, and then we do the JM presses with the chains. Again, easy solution here because what it does, it unloads. Normally we really like that heavy mechanical tension in the lengthened position. It's one thing that makes this exercise so brutally effective for just blowing your triceps up. But it also puts a lot of strain on the, on the elbows. But this allows us to continue to perform the movement and to still get a lot of tricep development while giving those elbow tendons just a little bit of relief down there on those lower insertions. And we, we just do it for phases and we go back to the others. Um, but you know, again, a lot of the lengthened position movements that really train triceps effectively there tend to be a little bit hard on the tendons. All right, notice he went up in weight this time on these floor presses. Um, again, Mike is really, really strong at floor presses. We put a lot of time into floor press work early on with him to build up his pecs when they were a weak link and he was training at home uh, with limited equipment. All right, seal rows again for, for his back. I mean, for Mike, I'm kind of rotating around between rows and pull-ups, and I may take him over to, uh, you know, just rows other than he, he likes having the arm development. So that's one reason we do pull-ups in here. Um, it is good if you don't want to do any curls, don't have time to do curls. Doing pull-ups is a, is a great way to build your biceps up. You know, because again, we have a lot of volume, a lot of exercises in Mike's program. And so squeezing more stuff in, you know, isn't, isn't always the best option. All right, dynamic effort, lower day, uh, safety squat bar against bands on a box. Uh, we're back over to conventional. Everything is narrow because his hips were starting to hurt after those sumo PRs. So we're trying to do most of his work with a closer stance for this phase. So uh, again, we went back to conventional deadlifts for this phase against, against heavy bands. All right, then we have pull-ups. Doing the pull-ups. And I've had someone comment too, they're like, we don't see a lot of your lifters doing weighted pull-ups or weighted chin-ups these days. And I'm like, no, you really won't because I don't think they're necessary. Uh, I would rather see people just do pull-ups and chin-ups mostly for volume. And the reason is these aren't lifts we're competing on. We don't need to maximize uh, our one rep max on them. That's not what we're trying to do. We're using them purely as uh, supplemental work to build areas up. Okay, and there's no point in beating ourselves up doing really, really heavy work on these, these exercises. You know, and, and again, it's relative to your strength. If I get a lifter who can crank out three sets of 20, you know, or even a couple sets of 20 and they can get 15 plus on a third set, whatever. All right, we, we can add some weight. We can throw a weight vest on. We can throw some plates on. We can do whatever we need to do, uh, even chains or something. But generally, if people are under 20 reps, I'm just going to have them do them with body weight. It does everything that we need it to do. And you, know, you get people who ask stuff like, well, how do you progress on them? What do you mean? You just progress with reps. Okay. And if you're at a point to where you're a big, strong lifter with a lot of muscle mass, you can crank out multiple sets of 20 on a pull-up. I mean, do we, do we really need to worry about progression on them at this point? Probably not. We're just getting tons of, of volume and workload in on, the, on that movement at that point, and it's going to continue to bring up those areas. All right, same thing. We take a stance in a little bit on the... Uh, belt squat, again, taking that stress off the hips, taking the stress off the hip flexors, off the hip joint a little bit uh, from the wide stance. And again, letting that, that inflamed area heal a little bit, but allowing us to still train maximally. And that's the idea. Anytime an area is inflamed, we don't let it rest. We train around it. We don't train through the pain. We train around the pain. We find the angles and the movements that will allow us to continue to train that don't aggravate the area so that we can keep moving forward, keep progressing. All right, and then of course we finish the week up with uh, glued ham raises and reverse hyperextensions. 
All right, guys, but well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I'll talk to you guys next time.